Thank you for joining us, Dr. Boyd. Always a pleasure speaking with you. And today we're talking about uh, Black history is Connecticut history. Uh, when you hear that type of phrase, what do you think of? Well, when we talk about what's going on in Connecticut, a lot of people want to talk about what's happening today. I like to take a historic look and remind people that the Amistad was actually moored here in New Haven. And we actually had a trial to return slaves back to slavery. So when we think about the North and we think that the North is without reproach, the North actually has an inconvenient history and Connecticut is part of that inconvenient history. So when we talk about black history being Connecticut history, we actually have to be open and honest about all of Connecticut's history. When slavery was enacted, people were brought to justice by trying to give people freedom. And remember when people were marching, they were marching in Connecticut as well in the 1960s, trying to get the right to vote. And remember, black people in this country, black people in Connecticut, didn't fully have the right to vote to 1965. So we're not talking 100 years ago, we're talking one generation. And many of your viewers were alive before black people in Connecticut actually had the right to vote. We've had such an interesting year in 2020 where we had the Black Lives Matter movement that really just shook the nation. Um, and, and we even talked one-on-one -on -one, um, about how this has this brought to light a lot of issues that the African-American community has. Do you think that we have come a lot of a ways from where we were this past summer to where we are now? We have more awareness. Do you think that we have that right now? We're definitely moving in the right direction. But remember, this is a journey. It's not a destination. So we're definitely further along because of a lot of the um, progressive things that have happened in the legislature. We have the police reform bill, the police accountability bill. I think that's definitely a step in the right direction. We're at the point where we're just starting to acknowledge the negative history that we've had. And before we can go on, before we can start the healing, because everyone wants to start at the, we need to heal and move on, but we can't move on until we acknowledge that people have been wronged. We have to acknowledge that people are hurting, that people are disenfranchised, that the system, the criminal justice system is problematic. And remember, racism is not an event. Racism is a system. So as we move forward, we're at the acknowledgement stage and we're at the point where people aren't necessarily totally woke yet, but at least the alarm is in fact going on in Connecticut. And just speaking of, of woke, um, how, how do we start having those conversations? I know we've had our own, um, when you've been working with news stations and also uh, police departments, but how do we take that conversation to the general public? We should start by acknowledging that things have actually happened. We need to acknowledge that there have been people that are wronged. And everyone is quick to say, but that wasn't me, that wasn't my family, we didn't own slavery. But there are still people that benefit from levels of privilege and benefit from the fact that other people are disenfranchised. Once we can acknowledge that and move forward, then we can see you know, a pathway forward. So when we look at the insurrection that happened on January 6th, remember there were multiple, at least two Connecticut flags that were being waved during the insurrection. So there are still people in Connecticut that are still fighting that age old fight, but we're moving in the right direction. We're just not close to being there yet.